Hello my friends and welcome again to my video channel. Today we will start a new project and surprise surprise it's another Drake TR7 transceiver. And now please stop. Do not switch to another channel. Do not say oh, not another TR7 please. I promise you I do not repeat things which I have shown several times in the other videos about TR7. I will show to you only things which are new and I'm quite sure there are new things inside, new problems. As I got the information from the owner, there's a problem with the receiver sensitivity. He thought the pin diodes are bad. Could be. I never saw a TR7 with bad pin diodes. I always read about this in the forums and other problems. So I will show you only, promised, show you only things which are new for us. So let's do a first check and start. This TR7 came in nearly pristine. I've never seen optically a better TR7. A, it's in version A. The case is nearly without any damage. I don't see any scratches, some dust on it. The front panel is really pristine. PTO nap. Knob is smoothing and it's very soft, like skin. Other knobs are also okay. A little bit loose, but not, not a problem. On the side here, this fan is new. The owner wants me to connect it to the DC supply. It's a low noise DC fan. Here is a cable tie. Mm -hmm. Don't know what for, we will see. It has divided rear panel. That's the TR7. Also, no problems. Even the end caps are perfect on both sides. Let's have a look on the bottom side. Ha! Then the rubber are missing. Not good. Very, very bad. If you find the irony, the irony, you can keep it. Well, that's it. I will do a first electrical check and see which problem we have. But again, the owner said he has problem with the output and the reception. So indeed, the pin diodes could be the problem. First thing is to check the receiver. We will switch on the calibrator. You can hear it, 7150. The passband tuning is is operating lower sideband when you go down to the other side then the reception is on the upper sideband this is a good sign that the BFO is working I had a contact with the owner and uh, my first assumption was that the BFO is not working but Obviously it is working. I can receive also CW and RTTY mode. Okay, now RTTY will have a very high pitch. Yeah, okay. It is also there. RIT. RIT is also working. Let's go to another band. 14 MHz. 21. Okay, 28, there is something and the other bands will have something, that's okay. <clears throat> One weird behavior when I switch on the noise blanker, the display disappears and the box is, the PTT is activated. And I switch off the box. Also, the transmit relay is acting when I press on the uh, uh, noise blanker. Hmm. Strange. Filter switching. I don't know which filters are installed. We will see. Now let's check the transmit path. Mode CW. Full scale is 200 watt. Dummy load connected. 
we can generate an output signal up to more than 100 watt that was 140 watt that's okay that means in cw we have the carrier there's a separate oscillator a separate bfo for this mode cw let's go to am carrier down i connect the microphone <coughs> okay in am also full scale that means indeed that the bfo is working uh, that the bfo is working because am is generated in this transceiver by reinserting the bfo behind the ssb filter it's not a true am it's an upper sideband signal with added carrier but when we have output that means the bfo which generates the ssb signal is also used for the am signal and the bfo is present good sign let's go to lsb okay nothing usb indeed nothing this means we have a problem anywhere in the switching transmit receive switching in the maybe in the single sideband uh, generation or so but not the bfo but there are many diodes for switching so we have to open it <coughs> sorry we have to open it and look into it the top cover is off here we have the dr7 the dr7 looks like it has been resoldered the pins which are very critical many old tr7 but these pin rows here they are resoldered so <coughs> so i assume we have no problem i will check it later when squeezing on ah, okay here's a screw missing to fix the dr7 not so important these blue pots hmm, could be replaced by 10 or 15 turn pots here i see a, a repair this driver transistor is replaced by an, what is it 2sc2509 someone has replaced the drivers with the finals the finals look original okay we will see whether it works also on the higher bands on 10 meter 28 megahertz and here we see a modification it looks like a relay and here's another cable which goes to the high pass filter it is connected here to the high pass filter i don't know what it is doing a little bit suspicious okay i will see what it is the owner didn't tell me that there was a modification made but there is no high frequency cable it's only some blue wire uh, red wires with some uh, non non shielded what it is good for i don't know well, I will take off this cover and have a look into the boards. Now it's clear what this modification is. It is connected here to the high pass filter, to the output of the high pass filter. This connection here in parallel, it's to the external antenna jack. Here we have the external antenna connection. It's this here and in parallel, we have a, co a quarks cable going to this cinch connector here. Someone abuse the alignment hole for T1101 to install a cinch connector for the external antenna. This external antenna is used especially for very low frequencies below 1 megahertz or so because the high pass filter always has a limitation in the bandwidth uh, down to, to zero or so. But this external antenna jack is also available here on the accessories connector i've checked it with an ohm meter it's the same it's i think it's this connector here maybe if the old man who did this modification has no accessories connector this this is the right one and here we can connect besides other things the external antenna i will take this away and if the owner needs it i will donate him such a connector well that's the first step i will do 
By the way, I don't think that this is the cause for the received problems we have. It's an additional capacitive load, of course, but I don't think that this causes the problems we have. I've removed this wire to the cinch connector here. Of course, it had no influence on the receiver sensitivity if this is not the cause of the problem. I wanted to focus on this modification, what this is, and I have seen this. This is a noise blanker board, and it is not seated correctly, as you see here. It is squeezed behind this board, and here it is not in the slot, as it should, and it is rather close to the chassis. Maybe if there's a short and this is a noise blank and when we switch on the noise blank we have a short. As we have seen, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I take it out and have a look at it. I couldn't identify the pin which had the connection to ground. There's one big pin which is a little bit uh, longer. It's the coax input, which is this here. But there is a capacitor series. So this cannot be the problem, but it can be the problem for the low sensitivity because when this is <laughs> shorted to ground, then we have a problem with the sensitivity. I will re uh, reinsert it and check the sensitivity. And now you can see we have full sensitivity. 1.5. Seven megahertz. Check the passband tuning is okay. Okay, which should be aligned up a little bit, but that's not your topic. AM is also okay. Let's go to the higher bands. Oh, what is this? Oh, let's see. So the odd harmonic S9. And the even one is, is weaker as seven, but on 21. Aha, aha, aha. There we have a stability problem. contact. This contact also affects of course the synthesizer. Maybe we have bad contact in the in the switches so that can be cleaned. But in general now we have full reception and the reason was only a bad inserted noise blanker board. Now let's have a look at this modification this relay here. Uh, meanwhile, I've talked to the owner and checked what the modifications uh, are or who did them. The previous owner used this TR7 on a ship for reception of uh, long waves to receive meteorological or weather data or informations on long wave. So he made these modifications and I will uh, rebuild or undo these modifications, the actual owner don't want them. And here we have the problem that this relay is connected to the both connectors of the antenna on the rear side of the TR7. Normally these two connectors are uh, connected inside with a bridge, they are shorted. They only uh, are cut, opened when this uh, pair of cinch connectors is connected to the R7, to the companion receiver, 
and the R7, R7 has a, a Wilkinson power divider in it, so uh, we can decide whether this R7 uh, is connected to this antenna or the R7 is connected to another antenna or whether the TR7 is connected to the other antenna and the R7 is connected to this. There's a switch on the front of the R7. It's a little bit a complicated scheme, but in general it is not necessary to have it open. It has to be shorted. And as I have seen, the, uh, the short is, is clipped. I will uh, re uh, undo it, I will resolder it. And then we have the original state and take out this relay. This relay is connected, as I see, to the uh, I think also to the accessory connector and the third one, this wire also to the VLF antenna input. So it is uh, again a modification for this purpose. I will look where this plus goes. This is a ground connection, but this is plus. I don't know exactly in the moment where it goes to. I will check it, but I will take out first this relay. Here we can see the advantage of the divided backplane. It can easily be taken out for screws in the corner. Then we have access, the relay is removed. Here we have the connection between the two antenna connectors. This red wire can easily be removed if necessary for the external antenna and the external receiver. We only have this wire, I don't know where it goes to. What was the trigger of the um, relay, the plus 12 volt? We will see where it goes to. By the way, here is an, another input used TX. This cinch connector here is connected to the coax, relay, uh, coax cable, which goes to the, I assume, to the microphone connector on the front. Maybe the high impedance input, I leave it as it is, it looks good. It goes, as I see here, and then go down to this connector on the side. Yes, the microphone connector is here on the right side, so it goes in this direction. I leave it. I will see whether it's okay, but I think it is okay. We have here this wire which <coughs> controls the relay, or controls the relay. When I take it out, okay, it was connected to the positive side of the relay coil. The negative side of the coil was, was connected to ground. But where does it come from? Here we have some diodes. Here are some diodes added. These modifications are always famous in case that the uh, auxiliary board is not present to switch on low frequency bands in the mode auxiliary program. Here we have the switch for the auxiliary program. And I assume this wiring switches on the relay and switches the internal antenna connector to the external uh, long wave antenna when certain bands are switched on here on the auxiliary board, which is not present but on the auxiliary switch. Here we have a connection, I assume there is a diode in. Here we have some diodes. Yes, we have here three, one, two, three wires. And uh, I've seen uh, during my first test that the TR7 shows very low frequency bands in some settings here. So I will now connect the voltmeter to this pin and check under which condition the, uh, the relay was switched on. Just for information, I'm a little bit curious about it, what it was to understand, but I think that was the modification. That's what we have assumed. When the auxiliary program is in zero, we have 1.5 MHz and a little bit more, 1.6. When we go to the first auxiliary program, watch this voltage. In the moment it is zero, now we have 4.6. The relay would be energized. It's a range of 100 kilohertz down to zero. Next band is 500 kilohertz up. And the next one is one megahertz up. So we have here three bands programmed for reception. And this would actuate the relay and connect the antenna connector to the VLF or long wave uh, antenna. Program four and higher are not equipped. 
Well, that's it. So I can remove also the three dials from the auxiliary program switch. The next modification we have here is made in many TR7. That is this interruption here. It gives the option to transmit on all frequencies, also outside the amateur radio bands. It is sometimes made in older TR7 where the new, so-called new WARC bands, 10 megahertz and so on, are not included in the ROM. So this is cut and this is the enable line to block the transmit in case of PLL failure or transmitting outside amateur bands. I'm not sure whether this EEPROM, which is inside this TR7A, has a new WARC bands or not, but I'm quite sure they are in. So I will solder it, solder bridge, and then I see what, what happens. If we have a problem, then I take it out again uh, and leave it to the owner to use this transceiver or not, because the danger is when the PLL is unlocked, when the trace here is cut, the transmitter is not blocked and will transmit on any frequency. This is not good. I will solder it and see what happens. The cut wire is soldered again. Now we can go to the transmit test. Well, we had problems in the mode uh, SSB in the output power. By the way, the uh, white cable here, which is connected on the rear side to the uh, transmit cinch, which is a modification, it is indeed connected to the microphone connector, but not here. The microphone connector is this one. And this wire goes to the microphone connector and it is parallel on this board. It is the transmit exciter board here. It is a microphone input. So we have a microphone input also on the rear side. Okay, I'm not a friend of this because this wire could co catch up any uh, high frequency. On the other hand, it is screened and the input is, is blocked with capacitors. So I leave it in the moment. I will ask also the owner whether he wants it or not. And then I can uh, remove it or not. I wanted to go to the transmit uh, test, but now I found another problem. The VCOs are obviously not stable. That's, a, that's a calibrator. And you hear. And I switch off the calibrator with up, down, it's okay, but in this, and it, it is not the uh, contacts here as I first assumed. Uh, now it locked. Or is it a problem with the PTO? Nice sound, futuristic, haha. <laughs> and the lower frequencies, no, it's not the PTO. Because in the higher bands, we have a second VFO, we have, we have two, two VCOs or VFO, VCOs. And obviously, we have here a problem. DR7 seems to be okay. Maybe we have a problem in the power supply. Ah, okay. This project is not so easy as I have thought. Haha. <laughs> well. Or not well. Now a short test of the transmit before we go to the problem with the VCOs. Now the SSB mode also works. We have output power. 
but the A ALC is not reacting. There is something set wrong with the ALC. But in general, also the microphone now works. The problem was indeed the noise blanker. The coax was connected to ground. The center lead of the coax. This is also the transmit path. This uh, noise blanker also has a transmit function in it, or not a function, it only leads the transmit signal through. So it is uh, also connected to the board and I assume it was a problem. Let's go to a different band. Okay. Also works. Same problem again. Still something to do. This end of part one of the video about this uh, TR7. One problem is solved, but new problems arise. I never had a problem with uh, faulty VCOs. Maybe it's a power supply. The VCOs have a separate power supply, 24 volt. It looks like there's a problem or in the PLL loop itself. But why does it lock on some frequencies and on other frequencies not? Okay, we have two VCOs. Obviously the VCO for the higher bands is not working correctly. We will check, we will see it in the next video. Stay healthy, stay tuned and see you on this channel.